From surgically modified bodies to becoming a millionaire in a day business, do we even know what's real anymore? Every day we are faced with the next best thing when we're just trying to become healthier, wealthier, and happy. What the fuck is real? What the fuck is true? What the fuck are you supposed to believe about yourself and your success while trying to build something that actually lasts? Welcome to What the Fuck is Beauty Anyway, the podcast. I am your host, Jen Carrasco, founder of Raga Studio, a fitness champion, IFBB pro figure competitor, a skincare line creator, and a serial entrepreneur. Well, and I'm an overall business coach. After years of building businesses from the ground up, I am here to help you with society standards and, well, to use your beauty within to build something that is truly you and truly impactful. So, now, let's dive in. Hey, hey guys, it's Jen Carrasco here. So, with my metabolism program and doing the breakdown kind of each week to go over a little bit of supplements and hormones and all of the above, I've gotten actually quite a bit of messages and DMs that kind of ask me to to be real, kind of ask me to talk about myself a bit. So I feel like the next couple episodes, we are going to break down the barriers of Jen and to really introduce myself and um, kind of open up the reason why I feel like I am definitely a leader in opening and expanding your eyes to different forms of, you know, way of thinking as well as, you know, your supplements and workouts and your metabolism and just to kind of break down where I've came from and um, what I've learned over the years. And um, I want to start off first off with my fitness journey. So a lot of people don't understand or know exactly where I started. And I started when my son was about, I think he was about five years old or something like that. And, you know, I just wanted to mainly get back into the gym because I was definitely overweight and I I wanted to get in get back into shape, you know, back into the body that I was prior to him. And going back to the gym, I was basically more of, you would say like your cardio queen, right? I would just basically do exercise or, you know, elliptical treadmills, things like that. I felt very inadequate to actually get over to the weightlifting and to put myself in that situation and that world because, you know, I did not know anything about it. And it's very, very intimidating if you do not know what you're doing. And you don't want to do something, you know, stupid or something to where people are looking at you thinking, okay, this woman does not know what she what she's doing. You know, she doesn't write the know the right thing. And so when when I train people or or coach people. I take myself back to that time and understand that, you know, I remember when I did not remember how to do things. And I remember how I personally felt at that time because it it definitely felt very inadequate. I did not I didn't want to go over there because you know, it was just more of like a self-esteem issue, right? And so I just typically just did the damn cardio in and out, in and out. And honestly, looking back now, I want to let people know that by doing cardio like that, as I call cardio queens, you're really not doing anything for your body long term. You're going to build more muscle and you're going to burn more calories with pushing weight around. So I'm going to explain my fitness journey and explain how 
I got where I am now and how, you know, I feel like I am an expertise at the whole realm of, of fitness, nutrition, and metabolism. And so what I did is I, I really wanted that body. You know, I thought to myself, I've already had my son. You know, I really want to get back to the point to where I'm extremely happy with myself. I want to be happy, you know, looking at myself naked in the mirror. I, I want to look good. And I've always had that vision with myself. Like I always want to look a certain way because it makes me feel happy. When I am healthy and I look fit, I am my happiest. And I don't, you know, you can call it whatever you want, but for me, that is that is my special sauce. I need to feel that way. And if I'm a little overweight, I don't I don't feel great. I don't feel like Jen who Jen really is. And so I actually hired a personal trainer one-on-one. And I hired a trainer not at my gym because I really did not want to work out with a trainer at my gym until I knew sufficiently what I was doing. So I hired a personal trainer at his private studio. And I would go in there, that was my time, and I would go in about twice a week to him. And then on top of that, I started really getting into spin classes. So I would hit spin in the morning uh, about two to three times a week. I would hit spin for a 45-minute class, and I would drive straight to his facility and work out with him personally. Now, he was a huge educator. And so for me, that is what I love. Like in my clinics, when I do skincare, or if I'm going over product with you, I am educating you about the product. I am educating you about your skin. Therefore, when I'm doing work with diet and nutrition, I am educating you. So I was very, very excited that I found a trainer that actually one-on-one educated me. And he would break down the logistics of everything to where I fully understood. So I worked out with him for about a year. And actually, I mean, I was with him for quite some time. But I would say maybe it was about a year or two years working with him. And I started to get into some really good shape. And at that point, I started feeling more secure at the gym to actually work out around other people because I felt like I was finally understanding what I was doing. And it's funny because, you know, I am very secure with myself now, but looking back then, I was very insecure with myself. So I would not even work out in the main area. I would only work out in the women's area. And it's because I just was self-conscious with myself, right? And maybe it's past relationships, past thoughts that were in my head of, you know, you should only be working out in a women's area. Men shouldn't be looking at you while you work out. And those are my own issues that, of course, I've dealt with and moved on from, but that was my secure place is was in the woman's area working out. So I did that probably about, I don't know, for a while, another six months, seven, eight months until I actually was really getting cut. And I mean, I was getting fit. And I took the leap to start working out in the area where everybody would work out. And lo and behold, I had a female come up to me. And this was after several years of working out. I mean, I I would have to say it was like five or six years, right, to get my weight down where I am. So that's why I tell you guys it takes time. It's not an overnight sensation. It takes time to get there and it takes focus and it takes the right diet. Honestly, I'm going to go back and say that I did not know much about diet at that time. I just worked out extremely hard. 
and I got into pretty good shape without watching my diet. And it's because, you know, I just, I worked hard at the gym and I pushed myself and I I got to that point. But diet, like, I didn't even understand diet at that point. So lo and behold, this female came up to me and she said, you know, you have a really great upper physique. Not many women have that. You should really look at doing a competition. And I thought to myself, competition, you know, what, what's a competition? And she said, you should look at doing a bodybuilding show, like a fitness show. And I thought to myself, well, you know, I, I'm really not 100% of where I want to be. And I know that if I had a goal, that I would push myself to get to that point, right? And so that was in my mind probably for a couple months. And like I say, and I always believe that when you put things out in the universe and you put those affirmations out, that things come into your life for reasons, right? Everything is a stepping stone to get you to a point that you need to be or that you need to learn from. And you need to trust that guidance. And um, long story short, for some reason, I got whim of this girl who helps to coach and train people. And for some reason, she got, you know, got, I guess, my name or that I was questioning somebody about it. And she called me and her and I discussed about possibly doing a show. And she said, you know, the way that you're at right now, I'm actually helping one other girl. And I think you need to look at, you know, doing your first bikini show. And I said, okay, let's do this. Right. And so I hired her as a coach and she walked me through diet and nutrition Um, She walked me through my exercises, uh, my cardio, what I needed to do to get myself into shape. And it was about a three-month cycle to get to that point. And I started to start learning about nutrition. And I started learning about supplements. And I started learning about proper protein intake and why you take whey protein and why you take isolate protein. And I started learning all of those key factors. And, you know, it was definitely mind opening for me. And I still didn't understand it all by any means. I would say, you know, I've been competing now for six, almost seven years. And I think the transition of really understanding the nutrition and the supplements really hit me about, I would say, four years, three or four years ago, where I finally got the aha moment of why these things work the way they do, right? Even with all my Legionnaire uh, training and coaching through First Form, you know, I understood it all, but I didn't know the concepts behind, you know, high fat, high protein, or high carbs, protein, low fat. Like, I didn't I didn't get it all. And so working with her, I worked with her for my first show that I ever did. And my first show that I ever did was a bikini show. And I actually did really, really well. And it's funny how it all intermingles together because I was doing the Spectrum Fitness Show and it was Noelle Tuman. It was her show, her and her husband's show. And so she heard about me through the show. And so she watched me when I when I first competed. Now, there was about, I want to say there was like 30 or 39 bikini pro or bikini um uh athletes, right? I guess what amateurs that I competed with. And it was my first show. And so for my first show competing. I actually placed 12th place, which is really, really good for your first show and not having like an actual, how do I say, like pro trainer helping you, right? And I wasn't on 
any supplements. I wasn't doing anything. I just did it straight from diet nutrition and I placed there. So after I did that, um, I was talking to my coach and I said, you know, I really think I want to bump up and I want to do figure. I want to put on some more muscle and um, I want to try to shoot for my first figure show. And so she said, you know, I really think that you have the capability to do this. You have the body for it. You have the determination and the drive. And I'm going to actually send you to somebody else to help you because I don't feel like I can do it at this point. So I hired um, a new coach at that point, and his name was Greg Atoyan, who is an IFBB pro bodybuilder. And I hired him, and he was in the Sacramento area. And so this became like my other job, right? I had a full-time job, and now competing was a full-time job because you have to train every day. You have to do you have to do your weightlifting every day. You have to do your cardio every day. You have to prepare your food, your meals every day. And to be quite honest with you, um, I was not happy in my marriage at that point. So this was my this was my outlook for myself. This was a time period for myself to go inside and really do things for Jen. Do things for Jen that's gonna that's gonna make her feel better, right? And this was this was my outsource. And so I hired Greg. And I started to aim for my first figure show ever. My first figure show again was in Sacramento area. And this was also with the Spectrum Fitness. And I did my first show and I placed third place at my first show. So after that... Greg and I were talking and he said, you need to go and compete in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to get your pro card. Because what you do is you get your nationals, or I'm sorry, you get your, your, um, you have to place in the first top three at a regular show. And then your second show is either a USA or a national show. And you have to play first to get your pro card. And at that time, I still didn't get the nutrition he just wrote me the diets out, right? And I'm going to say this with all love, but I think sometimes when they write these diets, they just want to fuck with you and make you so sick of chicken and salmon and everything else. But so we didn't really get the whole thing. I mean, I knew, I understood protein. I understood when you take protein after and why you do all of that, but I still didn't understand the fats. I didn't understand the carbs. I didn't get the whole insulin. I didn't get the hormones. I just didn't understand all that. It was basically just competing for fun and getting myself to a certain point that I wanted to. So we went ahead and did the nationals out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which now is my second show as a figure amateur competitor. And so I flew out there. I mean, let me tell you, when I dial into something, I dial it in. If I have a goal, I'm going to hit it 150%. I'm not going to I'm not going to slack off. That's just not who I am. And so I competed in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and when I was out there, I actually got called out. There was 30 girls competing and they called me out in second place. And so if you ever watch a bodybuilding show, you have to line up with the first top five people that they picked. So there was first place and I was second place. And I remember thinking to myself when I was up there, this is your last shot that you have. You better do everything that you were taught at this point. And so I remember going over my routine in my head that Greg went over with me over and over. And I just, you know, sucked in my stomach. I lifted up my shoulders. I popped, you know, my knees out a little bit. Like there are all these little things that were going through my head. And all of the sudden they switched me to first place. 
So when I got off the stage, was this was the morning show. Now there's two shows. If you don't watch bodybuilding, there's two shows. The first show is where they call you out. The second show is actually when they let you know who the winner is, right? So I knew that I was at least first or second place. So at the night show, I got called out first place. So I won my pro card on my second figure show ever. And I remember calling Greg. Um, So I'm going to go over this on another podcast, but, you know, I did not get support with competing. It was, um, it was really bad. I, I got no support from my husband at the time. He was very, very negative over the whole thing. Um, Very insecure and, So I won my pro card and I remember going back into a room where it was only competitors allowed. And I remember that the only person I really felt that I could call that would be happy for me would be my coach. And I remember calling him and he was just kind of like, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this, that you did this. And just so, so excited. And I remember crying because I thought to myself, I have nobody else to be happy for me and share this with because other people are so insecure with the reasons why I do this, thinking that I do this for other alternatives than the reason of I actually fully want to do this because this makes me happy, right? So... Lo and behold, that is how I got my pro card. So after that, um, I had to transition my life a lot. Um, Now I was actually competing professionally. So I had to take a year off to build up some more muscle. And um, this is where the, the total hard truth comes out for people And the honesty that a lot of people will not be honest about that I will be because I will never be somebody that would lie about anything or hold anything back. Um, At that point, Greg told me that he doesn't see that he could help me with competing going in the pro level and competing that he needs to turn me on to a different coach. So at that time, I hired... Um, I hired a, uh, another coach that actually coaches a lot of elite, elite IFBB pro athletes. So if you ever think of Dalen Bailey, you know, anybody that is definitely in that pro elite, um, that is actually who, um, taught me and his name is George Farah. So George Farah took me under his wing and, started working with me to compete professionally. At that time, I started to become friends with um, the owners of Spectrum Fitness. And so I hired Noelle to actually personally help to coach me on my posing. So I was actually working in the back in Spectrum Fitness. I was working a lot of shows for them. She was helping me with my posing. I hired a professional coach to help me with my competing. And I started my competing journey. And that is where I started to understand the realization of actual food. And that's when I got to realize and understand supplements. And that all intertwined with first form as well. So with getting my pro card, first form actually reached out to me And they flew me into their headquarters to actually get personally one-on-one education with their products. So I was one of the first Legionnaire athletes to be at the First Form headquarters when it first opened. So I flew out there about two to three times to get one-on-one education, and that's where it all started. That's where I understood good protein. That's why I understand it. Whey protein, isolate protein. I understand supplements. I understand omegas, vitamin Ds, niacin, glutathione. It's, you know, that's where I started to implement all my education. 
And then as I started competing more with George, I started to understand more of the reasoning of why he put certain foods together and where I needed to eat that and how I needed to eat that and how that would affect me. And that's how I would change my body composition. And then this is where it comes out in my metabolism program that I try to really emphasize to females that you cannot build muscle like men, right? I got my pro card naturally. You can't do that a lot of times. It's extremely hard to do that. I was very fortunate. I had more upper body strength than your average female. But a lot of people, they do not have that. And in order to compete, you have to supplement. In order to build muscle, you have to supplement. And it's not supplement meaning like protein, anything like that. But you actually need to start dabbling a little bit in, you know, some steroids. And so as a female, I started dabbling to put on some some muscle mass. Now, this is a thing that I really go after people is people overdo this. As females to put on muscle, you do not have to do very much. A little goes a long way. If you look at me, I look female, correct? I have no hair. I have no manly structure to my face, but I do have muscle. And that is the thing that I feel like there needs to be more education around. And it doesn't need to be such a hidden thing that people feel like they can't discuss because it needs to be open. It needs to be honest and people need to talk about it. And I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to be open about it. In order for me to compete professionally, I had to supplement. And it is the only way that I could build up the muscle that I needed to compete with these other females. So when I tell you that women cannot build muscle like men without supplementing, it is absolutely correct. So if you eat protein, you lift heavy, heavy weights, you are not going to gain muscle like men, I promise you. So going back to that, that is where I started gaining all of my knowledge and my education. George walked me through a lot. I learned a lot from George. I learned a lot about what ter- certain types of food do, the difference you know, between salmon, tilapia, chicken, beef, Anything you can think of, that is where I gained all of my knowledge. So with competing over years, it came a point eventually that I got accepted to the Arnold Australia and I was going through a divorce at that time and my body was definitely beaten down and broken down and I came up with shingles about three weeks before my show. And I still competed through the show, but I have to tell you that I've never felt the same about competing again after that. And I think it's because it just mentally and physically wiped me out. And I think that's where I've definitely um, fallen back on competing lately. You know, the fact of that I just don't have that drive quite yet. I'll do another show, but I don't have a drive for it. But I felt like this was the time period that I needed to to start helping others and especially women. I get a lot of questions from women that they want to lose weight and they want to get their body back to shape and everything else. And what I've learned from competing is the fact that, you know, I literally royally fucked my metabolism up. My cortisols were shot. I was not healthy. I was so self-sabotaging with the food I ate that I was not human. Meaning that, you know, I had to plan my meals out. And if I didn't plan my meals accordingly, that um, I would self-sabotage myself in the mirror over and over. It didn't end up being a healthy lifestyle for me. And that's where I felt like I really had to take a change And I needed to pull myself away from that fitness lifestyle because I needed to get my head back on straight. I needed to understand that, you know, 
your life doesn't revolve around food or when you're eating it and making sure it's timed perfectly. I wanted to somewhat get my my brain and myself back to reality. And for me, I felt like this was a way that I start educating people pretty much about what food does to your body and why you should be eating food a certain way and what you can do to up your metabolism. And I really feel that with competing and with supplementing and with doing things to my body, it definitely broke my body down in certain areas, right? I couldn't absorb food properly. Um, My body couldn't digest food properly. My adrenals were out of whack. I remember a certain part, like I almost thought I was pre-diabetic because, you know, my blood glucose was a little bit crazy. And so it was a lot of learning, a lot of understanding what foods do to you and do to your body. And so that is the realization that I came around with creating the metabolism program is I really wanted to dial in and I really wanted to help other people to understand their bodies. I wanted them to understand exactly what food does to your body, what your cortisols do to your body, what extra training does to your body, and how malnourishment from food can do to your body. And so that is my story. And that is how I really got into the fitness realm. That is how and why I am who I am today and why I'm so adamant about nutrition and supplements and proper nutrition and what people should be doing. And I mean, that's my story. So I know that there are some questions about, you know, how I got started and, you know, why I feel so passionate about what I do now. And it's it's because I've been through a lot and I educated myself a lot through all of this. And I want to give back to you guys. I really want you guys to understand the nutrition factors about it because a lot of people do not understand that. And with that said, uh, the next couple podcasts, I'm definitely going to be going over a little bit more about how I got into the realm of everything. And, you know, I know some people asked about, you know, how I got into really doing more business and coaching and things like that. And so we're going to dive into that, I think, the next couple podcasts and go a little bit more. So, but with this, I do want uh, to please say, please um, review, please like, please share. Definitely helps me out. Um, if you guys have any questions about anything, always feel free to DM me any point. And with that, make it an amazing week, you guys. Thanks for turning in this week. I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed this episode. And I hope you're feeling stronger mentally and physically and ready to kick some ass. As we navigate new society norms, business and beauty breakthroughs, make sure to always ask yourself, what the fuck is beauty to me? And know that's all that really matters. If you love this content today, make sure to subscribe, rate and review. Follow me and get more info on how to work with me at jencarrasco.com. You can also find me on all of your favorite social media platforms. Now just remember, stay mentally tough.